legislative matters of January 14, 2019. Um, I am City Councilman Bill Dwight, I'll be presiding. Um, and Laura, would you do me the honor of calling the roll? Sure. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Councilor Carney. Present. And Councilor Murphy. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Councilor Klein will be late. She gave us a notification. She should be here in a little bit. <coughs> Open the floor up to public comment with the caveat that these proceedings are theoretically being recorded uh, on video and audio. Anyone in the public? There's actually let, for the record, so the camera knows anyway, there is no public here. <laughs> so uh, first I'll accept a motion for the approval of the minutes of, from the previous meeting of November 13th, uh, 2018. And we get two, 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 oh, two sets of, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. That was the joint, uh, that was the day of the joint committee. Meeting. So, um, so the two, the joint community resources, legislative matters meeting, and then also the one um, for the we'll legislative. As a group. And I will second as a group. Okay. Any discussion on the approval of the minutes? They were very nice. They were very nice. Please note that. All those in favor of accepting the minutes of the two minutes of January 13, 2018, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now, uh, let's see. And this public hearing was scheduled for five, Laura? Is yes. that right? Okay. Sorry. Uh, I'll accept a motion to open the public hearing on proposed zoning change of uh, per Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 5. I will move to open the public hearing. Second. Okay. All those in favor of opening the public meeting, please say aye. 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 Okay. So, this is <coughs> in relation to a proposed zoning ordinance amendment to modify the definition of uh, accessory structures. Um, we, in <laughs> well, all right, we'll go through the format. We, we uh, will hear from proponents, and actually so far I only see a proponent. And uh, Carolyn, would you like to step up and address the uh, proposed change? Sure. So the proposed change is to add one word to the definition um, of accessory structure in the zoning ordinance um, to specify that among uh, um, other um, items that are not allowed as part of um, an accessory structure uh, besides sleeping or kitchen facilities is specifically to add the word bathing. Um, so that it's clear for people who are building accessory structures that are not accessory dwelling units that um, bathing would not be allowed in those facilities as well. The request came from the building commissioner to uh, because he wanted um, text support to, for his interpretations when he's um, meeting with um, applicants who are trying to build workshops or garage spaces to um, make sure that everyone understands um, very clearly that these are allowed as workspaces um, the reason as opposed to living spaces and the reason for that is that um, your detached accessory structures can be a lot closer to property boundaries than um, accessories while you and also accessory dwelling units require additional review from the planning board or zoning board depending on the um, situation. Um, so, and, and then the only other thing I would add is that the planning board reviewed this last week at its public hearing and they had um, unanimously voted a uh, positive recommendation for full city council to adopt the language change um, with no edits. Was there, was there any public comment on this in, in front of uh, uh, questions? Since I don't have a hard copy, could you just read uh, the, uh, oh, there it is. So the toilet is not allowed? No, the toilet is allowed. Okay. So wash, right. so sinks and toilets are allowed. The yeah. idea is you wash can't put a shower in. Mm -hmm. No shower. Or a bathtub. And, um, you know, the building commissioner has never had a problem saying this is, this, you know, 
I guess the issue is um, where does the where does the line get crossed between whether it's a dwelling unit or just a workshop space, particularly in the situations mm -hmm. where they are closer to the property boundary than are yeah. normally allowed. Um, so workshop space, but they can't be. It cannot be a commercial workshop in a residential district, correct? Well, um, this doesn't. You. It, that depends. That's a whole different question about whether you are allowed a home occupation um, mm -hmm. permission. Um, this is generically what an accessory structure is. So depending on the district, you might be able to we'll have, do a home occupation. Yeah, home business, or if it's a commercial district and you have an accessory structure. Okay. If that's the case, I know it's going to be a pain in the butt, but I'm sorry, but it, um, for some shop purposes, actually. There's emergency shower systems for uh, contamination possibilities. There's also uh, eye wash stations and things like that. Uh, that commercial and the private shops may have those systems. The, and they come as showers, essentially. And I, I don't know, I mean, I suppose they could appeal for variance, I suppose, if given the circumstances. A welder, for instance, may want something that or, or somebody using with solvents or something. But that also requires other permitting because if you're with permitting, I think, uh, with welding, you need to permit too for, to have a settling or any other potential explosive yeah. in the shop. So I would say that um, the building commissioner still has the ability to interpret the code and okay. how it's applied. So if someone's work is with, I don't know, photo development or something, you know, the right, old school right. <laughs> with old a school. lot of chemicals. Right. Um, you know, I think someone can make the argument this is an eye washing station. Yeah. It's not anything. Okay. But if they had a bathtub that would suddenly tip you off and go, wait a minute, it's a bathtub. Yeah, they're right. on fire. <laughs> yeah. They're going to put themselves right. out. It's different from right. you, don't need to, you don't need a bathtub to wash your eyes. Right. <laughs> okay. Do, do, yeah, do, like, you could have a sauna, but you couldn't have the shower. Um, sure. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, I mean, it's, it's like a hot out? tub, I guess. You know, you and the hot tub would or would question. not be bathing. About that's what I'm wondering. You know, is bathing is in toilets. Because that's what people bathing. I think that's pretty yeah. clear. Bathing you is. Well, as I said, when Carolyn came in, a bidet, of course, then crosses the line, doesn't it? <laughs> so I don't think that's bathing I'm, unless you're, you know. Yeah. 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 That's a form of go there. But what about a facility for washing your dog, which is bathing <clears throat> your dog? I think that goes in the house <laughs> <laughs> or outside. You know, you know, we're talking about accessory structures yeah. here, and right. you know, there is some limit to what you can do in an accessory structure, and if you know, volatile chemicals is an area we can't go into because you can't have bathing facilities whether well, they're going to have to find something other than an accessory structure to put their volatile chemicals in and then what we're and to be clear we're talking about accessory structures on accessory dwelling units these are not units that to do to promote habitation right so we have a different definition for accessory dwelling so the issue is when someone says they want to do an accessory structure and their garage happens to be two feet or four feet from the property line and all they're doing is a workshop space and then, oh, I'm just going to put in this bathtub. I'm just going to put in this wet bar that then becomes, you know, you plug in a stove and a microwave and all of a sudden it's a dwelling unit. So. All right, so yeah, although it would be a little more complicated because they would probably, putting in a microwave and a cook stop would probably come after the CO is granted and they would they probably wouldn't do it for the inspection I would guess no but then you could then obviously then if something happens someone comes in and says hey this is a dwelling unit and the person says no it's not it's just a microwave I work here and I get hungry and I need a hot pocket or something you know um, so again it becomes interpretive but um, this is just another piece to help um, with that distinction so I'm sorry that I was late, and you may have already addressed this, but 40% um, of the gross floor area of the principal structure. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about a home that's something like 2,000 square feet, we could be talking about something that's almost 1,000 uh, 1, square feet. Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you have any sense of nearby cities and towns and how that compares to what they're allowing for accessory structures? I think a it just standard seems like a lot is, to me. Well, I think accessory, and it's not just for structures, but accessory uses are typically, have typically been in that 40% range, I think. And I don't know, Alan, if you have other experience about that, but that's that's been a long standing, certainly in our code, 40% has been the threshold for a long time for accessory uses as well. It, it, and to be clear, that's existing. We're talking about the amended language merely bathing. So, oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. And, and I was mired in the, this actually was an uh, accessory dwelling battle up in Greenfield a while back. And it's, it's difficult, it's difficult, particularly for this uh, accessory dwelling units. That's a whole nother, yeah. whole nother topic. I mean, and we particularly do. In, in the inner, you know, the, the more densely populated, populated neighborhoods where accessory dwelling units end up in garages two feet from a property line, right. it's a real problem. So we're only looking at the addition of bathing? That's right. The whole that's thing. it. That's, that's right. right. It's exactly. in the existing code. Okay. At the request, Sorry, Louis requested it right. because the, he needed clarification when, when he was permitting, when he was going to be granting permitting. And if somebody built a shower facility or even a bathtub and things like that, then suddenly it sure looks like it's a predicate for a, a dwelling unit. Thank you. I apologize that I came in late. So in the, pro in the context, I haven't heard any, the opponents have been pretty quiet on this, and so we've left it up to the council to discuss this with the hearing. But as such, I, I would not move we close the hearing. Thank you. Is there a second? All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. I would move we forward this with a positive recommendation. Okay. Well, that just happened coincidentally. You happen to be the next item on the agenda, so that's really that's good. I so, will. so that the uh, <coughs> Council Murphy has proposed that we move forward with a positive recommendation, item 18.204. Second that. Uh, any further discussion on that? All those in favor of a positive recommendation, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And I just want to add, I'm not going to be at the meeting on Thursday. I didn't think this was incredibly could, complicated. We could run um, yeah. What's that? We could run a yeah. We gave I you a taste of what we could do with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's in your hands to direct that with the full council. Ooh, bad choice. <laughs> Um, I may have a spy in my place in the form of Wayne. Okay. <laughs> um, he's going to be at the council anyway on Thursday, so if something did come up, but I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. I figured you guys would be okay. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> now we're on the fifth item of the agenda, right? Yeah. This, uh, this item 18.22 is an ordinance. Oh, goodness. Relative to taxis and livery vehicles for hire, this was referred by us, the council, to LM at the last council meeting. And uh, this is, you'll see the principal changes are relative to whether the business is based in Northampton or not. Uh, in, in subsection A, it's no person, corporation, or other entity and strike based in Northampton. But and shall operate a taxi cab or livery business within the city of Northampton without a permit as provided herein. D the new language is taxi cab and livery businesses located and permitted in other communities shall be required to obtain a permit in accordance with this chapter. I mean, the existing language states permits may be granted only to suitable persons, corporations, and other entities who are legally registered owners of said taxi cabs or livery vehicles and provided that all places of business and strike for servicing and add instead located in <coughs> Northampton are reestablished as a legal street address and strike within the city and then just leave it as conforming to all applicable city ordinances and state laws. Um, an additional change is further down and that's in subsection B operation and marking of livery vehicles which now reads, which reads, livery vehicles shall be hired on a prearranged basis only with a minimum, and we struck the uh, cardinal numerical 12 and replaced it with, by spelling out 12, our notice, 
And then adding to that, provided that fares picked up pursuant to a pre-existing contract shall not be deemed to comply within the 12-hour requirement unless the specific fare was arranged at least 12 hours in advance. And that's the only, and those are the, those are all the proposed amendments that are recommended <coughs> to us from the Transportation Parking Commi Commission. And we have, uh, and we have the solicitor here, and we also have the chair of TPC who can speak to these two items. It's okay if I sit here? You, you may sit there, yes. <coughs> oh. All right, so these two items uh, started with, so we revised the te texting language, I guess, what was it, a year ago, six well, months ago? If you're talking about when we started? No, well anyway, okay. we voted some stuff through a while ago. Yeah. And when that happened, then one of the businesses, the, the taxi businesses, um, who doesn't have a, their- uh, Business address here. Yeah, they're not located actually in Northampton. They're just across the line over in East Hampton. And they looked at this and they said, well, you're gonna cut us out. We can't do our taxi business here. Well, there was two things going on. There was one, yeah, you're probably right that um, that the way this is written, you need to move across the line like 100 yards and you'll be in Northampton. But the other is that you can't be using your livery vehicles to do, um, to act as a taxi here in Northampton. Am I getting this right? Is it the other way around? <laughs> can't be using a taxi to act as, as a, a livery? No, the problem was that, was that Livery vehicles, because livery, the, the, uh, insuring a livery vehicle is less than a taxi, right. and that the fleet right. uh, for this particular business is split 50-50, and that at times a livery vehicle might be used to, to do a taxi pickup, right. and they also um, they have a um, they have a, some contracts in particular with uh, Cooley Dickinson Hospital that it's an ongoing contract. But the actual, uh, sometimes the um, the rides are not determined till the day of, so that they would fall. In. So if you're calling to pick up Mrs. Smith right now, that's a taxi pickup. But if you called yesterday and scheduled it, that that could be a livery pickup. So um, the idea with the with the second part was to clarify, if you're picking up somebody under 12 hours, it needs to be a taxi. If it's over, it's fine, it's a livery vehicle. And the other thing was to, um, and I, I think the bigger thing here had to do with defining um, the, the types of businesses here in Northampton, you know, that we want taxi businesses that meet our regular, we want the taxis and the drivers to meet our uh, requirements to do business here. And whether they're in East Hampton or Northampton, and as long as they've done all of the permitting, it doesn't really matter whether they're right across the line or they're here. And also that they're at a legal address because that was another thing we were running into with another taxi company was that there were some zoning issues around the way they were operating. So that's what these two things clean up and take it away. <clears throat> Do I understand that in 316-17 that uh, for instance, a taxi that picks somebody up at the bus station in Springfield cannot, uh, a Springfield taxi picking up somebody at the Springfield bus station cannot transport somebody to Northampton if they're not per permitted here. Because I don't think you can do that. I, no, I don't think that's, it, it, it has to do with pickups. In, in Northampton, it's so Northampton pickups. This is about Northampton pickups, right? Right, so if you're. D can you help us write this? Did I just want to make sure that. <laughs> Just want to make you sure didn't we're excluding, but but my understanding was that all pickups that were going to occur in Northampton had to be by an authorized right. permitted vehicle. Right. Right. Drop offs are drop offs. They're they're you know someone from Springfield or someone from Manhattan. Mm -hmm. If they're if someone wants to take a cab from Manhattan to here, that that they don't need to at the border need to get a permit in order to drive and drop someone off here. So should we mention pickups in here? Well, just because it says, ta I just want to make be clear about taxi cab and livery businesses located and permitted in other communities shall be required to obtain a permit in accordance with this chapter to do what? 
to pick up in North Hampton. Pick up. I think I think that's a reasonable addition to, for certainly for clarity's sake. Yes, I mean, presume it's. I mean, right, because it starts with. They might not be able to drop someone off. And that's right. That's yeah, it says concern. no person, corporation, or other entity shall operate a taxi cab or livery business within the city of Northampton without a permit as provided herein. So I think we definitely have to make the we have to make the distinction that it is, uh, or we would I would recommend that the distinction be made that is for pickup only. Any pickup. Picking up anyone in a Northampton location requires a permitted, uh, a vehicle that accommodates or abides by the permitting strictures. But to, for drop off, I, I agree with the solicitor, we, and it's impractical to suggest that any other agency coming in to drop someone off in Northampton would be uh, probably some sort of restraint. Yeah, right, also. yeah. So let's change that. So the first sentence is a problem too, not just the, yeah. the second one. It says shall operate. Well, you see, that's the thing. You're operating a taxi cab or livery business. That's not picking up or dropping off. That's locating a business and operating a business here in Northampton. Business, right. Um, okay. So. So it is just the second sentence, is what you're saying? Yes. In accordance with this. So are you guys just suggesting adding the language to pick up fares in Northampton? After the word in accordance with this chapter, yes, is that yeah, that's what I was hearing. Yes, so we were talking to pick up fares in Northampton. In order to pick up fares in Northampton. Yeah. So do we need to do this as a proposed amendment? Yeah. I propose to yeah, we'll the which as Laura just said. He, and Alan, <laughs> would it make sense to be even further explicit by saying? These restrictions will not apply to um, companies dropping off clients. I think it's pretty clear in order to pick up fares in Northampton okay. is in order okay. to pick up fares in Northampton. Um, I've made that amendment. So is there a second? Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion further on this amendment? It's clarification. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Um, and then the 12 hour, and the other issue is the 12 hour notification, making the dubious distinction, as far as I'm concerned, between livery and taxi cab, which is really always bizarre. And it has less to do with what actually occurs as to what, how someone wants to pay. The biggest knock was, it, uh, and, and I remember this going back to Chief Sinkowitz, was that uh, cab companies were taking advantage of just registering all their vehicles as livery vehicles and then functioning essentially as de facto cabs. And the distinction in the law is so vague as to allow for cheaper, it's cheaper to do a livery vehicle and, and I think the restrictions are less as well. Uh, the, the, I'm not sure about the child safety seat and inspection issues and metering particularly so um, I have no problem with this I know I mean you know this this whole problem the taxi license issue that has been complicated by the fact that the Commonwealth among others that have and have this is a, an amorphous system also given the fact that their biggest competitors right now start to be looming up are essentially unregistered systems like Uber and Lyft and such like um, and we don't want to, I mean, we, we're trying to be conscientious and not make it so difficult that taxi cabs couldn't function as a viable enterprise in the city of Northampton and just give over to them. So it's tricky, we're threading a needle. But, so this, this distinction's helpful, um, but it, it seems to, that it's one we specifically designed to accommodate one particular business with one particular contract, and that's with Gooley Dickinson Hospital. That makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Well, it, that was the... Inspiration. Yes. The, 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 um, we didn't get all of the details of that one particular contract, or but it, we were told that there was other maybe kind of arrangements with other entities like that, but that was the one 
with the same point two, because you're dealing with patients and yeah, things no, like that. And also, UMass was mentioned that they do a lot of service between the health services over there. You know, kids getting intox overly intoxicated. The ride to Cooley Dick or back home is uh, well, the one back home is often pro provided by. The one to Cooley Dick is usually probably provided by, by the ambulance. ambulance, right? So the back home is okay. The, the, and, I agree with you. We don't want to make things overly difficult for these people to operate because they really provide a service to a lot of people. They don't have vehicles. A lot of people um, who are on uh, in public housing. This is how they get to the grocery store or to their appointments. There, some people qualify for the PVTA paratransport that doesn't go everywhere. This will actually pick you up at a given time and drop you off at a, you know, and, and get you to your appointment on time. So um, there, there's a lot of value to what they're doing. So we want them to keep going. No, I, I agree with you. I, I, the only thing that makes me feel uncomfortable is when you start making law specific to one particular agency. That makes me well. And by rewording it, we were making it so more than one taxi company could operate in North. <laughs> yeah. That that was the other thing. So we had created a monopoly. So by having our because they are there was one that's located here in Northampton and the other wasn't. Okay. Uh, Alan, uh, you, are you comfortable? I mean, you understand my, my concern? Oh, I understand your concern. Okay. I'm sh I, I would imagine that there are others that we're not aware of. I would imagine the VA might have standing contracts, um, you know, nursing homes, right. other other places where there's a congregation of people who don't necessarily have their own transportation. So point of fact, actually, to Council Nash's point, rather than actually create a law that is right now, not intentionally, but created essentially a situation of, of, of one business operation that benefits one business in town, we've now expanded opportunity for other, other businesses. And it, uh, it's more of an umbrella and less agency specific. That's right. Well, you know, there there are examples historically of uh, regulations that were put into place where there's only one regulated entity, and one of them that I remember is when the uh, the health commissioner of Cambridge outlawed outlawed anthrax research in Cambridge. There was only one anthrax researcher in the city, and the SJC said, "Well, it's not an adjudication; it's a regulation because there could be more." And when they come in, they're going to be same, subject to the same rule. So I, I'm not as troubled by it as you are. I understand the the concern when it's when it, when it looks like you're doing something for one particular constituent in the city. That's spot we zoning. That's spot zoning, right? Well, I mean, it, it, that was my concern. We, right. Because in so far as this is a zoning law, about, well, not a zoning law. So this is, but it's equivalent to be. But you pass this, and it gives the opportunity. And, and you know, should the VA see this, they can say, "Oh, well, we can start our own agency. We can start this for ourselves." And so it opens up the door for others uh, to do the same thing that Cooley Dickinson's doing. So I, I don't have the problem with it that, that you do. Okay. No, I don't, I don't have a problem. Just I want clarity, so I want to be sure. Laura. May I make a suggestion for a minor wording change that yeah. you can feel free to ignore? I find it a little difficult to understand because it's almost like a double negative, provided that fares picked up pursuant to a pre-existing contract shall not be deemed. I was just going to suggest um, end the first sentence after the word notice, take out the words provided that, and just say fares picked up pursuant to a pre-existing contract shall be deemed to comply with the 12-hour requirement if the specific fare was arranged at least 12 hours in advance. It's just restating no, it in the positive I, instead of... I take your point. I think that is much clearer. I think that, that it, it transmits the same message, and I agree it's not... I just found it difficult. I had to read it a couple times. That so could be just me. Anyone else? Any other comments on um, Laura's proposal? We could uh, anyway. keep the provided that and then turn it into a. That's true too. Uh, That's true. Because provided that right. is a right. is something that we see in statutes and in, in ordinances all the time, and it's just alerting the reader that we're going into ex an exception now right. from the general rule we just stated. And if you just separate the sentence, it doesn't say as clearly. We are now stating an, an exception to the general rule. 
so you're just changing shall not and less to shall if yeah that's right. the only change yeah okay so yeah the proposed language shall change now will be yeah. shall we strike strike not be and change to if Right. Yeah. Shall no, unless. just just yeah. and then even less, right? Comply. Just the just the not not be yeah. not 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 be just not. Yeah. Shall <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm trying to see what you can you just read that. Okay, so a pre-existing contract shall be deemed to comply with the 12-hour uh, requirement. Yes. If strike unless. If if if, if, if I the see. specific okay. fare was yeah. arranged at least 12 hours in advance. Does that sound right? Good work. Yes. Good work. And good catch law. All right. All those in favor? Oh, actually, I'll, I'll move that uh, as that worded by law. Okay. And for okay. a second. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Be opposed? Okay. All right. So we cleared up the language and we've cleared up the intent. Um, <coughs> any further discussion on the body? Uh, I'll. Do we have a motion on this already? No, we don't. A motion to amend. Um, yeah, a motion to amend. So we pass the motion to amend. So is there a motion as amended? I would amended? move the ordinance as amended. Second. With a positive recommendation. The second. The full council. Amen. Any further discussion? All those in favor of advancing to this to the council with a positive recommendation is amended. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. On a roll. We are cooking. Now. Now this is where we're wading into some dark controversies here, but this is item 18.223. This is an ordinance relative to parking on Pleasant Street. It was referred to the council by the, I referred to us by the council. This is an ordinance relative to parking on Pleasant Street, and it's essentially establishing a handicapped space in the first space southeasterly of Kingsley Avenue off Pleasant Street. I would move approval. So we can talk about it. Okay, for, for the purposes of discussion, there's a motion to put it on the floor. Is it, and there's a second. All those in favor of putting it on the floor, please say aye. 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 Councilor Nash, you have you have some thoughts about this. Yeah. So uh, as the chair of the TPC, um, this uh, was sent forward with a positive recommendation. Um, it was presented to us at our last meeting. Um, it it would it was uh, placed on the agenda at, at the deadline and um, I didn't have time as the Ward 3 counselor to reach out to constituents prior to it being at the TPC but it came forward from uh, the, the, the city uh, parking traffic engineer and uh, uh, that um, in discussion that there was a formula that um, that was used to locate the parking spot at this particular location. Um, I, I voiced concern about it at the meeting, noting that, so that this is a space, it, Millennium Liquors, which is on Pleasant Street, it's just south of Roberto's, past Kingsley. There's, uh, on that stretch, there's two legal parking spaces. There's one in front of that, uh, millennium and then there's the next strange building with the strange setback where there's only one space as well so we have this stretch of, of Pleasant Street that's probably you know let's say a hundred feet long and due to a fire hydrant a street setback and a number of things only has two parking spaces and so this is a business that has you know it's it's a package store uh, gets a lot of walking business but this is the one of two spaces in front of the building that would be uh, turned into a handicapped parking space and that the the owner um, when I spoke to him uh, about it was was concerned about it yeah there we go and that um, so the history as to how this came about um, so anyway it got it got a positive recommendation from TPC I voted positively for it based on the information that I had at that time. So what's nice about forwarding it like that is now, so that I'm putting aside my TPC chair hat and I'm not putting on my board three hat and, and, and representing the, the two, two businesses here, both Roberto's and uh, Millennium Liquors, who I've since had a chance to speak to. 
and that there's a history as to how this came about. Um, that recently Roberto's underwent some renovations. Um, prior to the re renovations, there was a hand. They provided a handicapped parking space on their property in front of the building. When they did the renovations, they decided um, it, that they were trying to create more seating. And in the end, they decided we're not going to do a handicap handicapped parking space here. We were just going to turn it into seating all, all you know the entire area. That triggered this need to find a handicapped space in the area. And DPW came forward. They landed on this parking space in front of Millennium Liquors. Um, I've asked. Um, uh, I'm in the process of trying to find out if there's a way that this can be reworked because both business owners are fine with a handicapped space being located just north of the um, the crosswalk there because that would be it would be great for Roberto's because they got a handicapped space there and it would not take away the the space directly in front of Millennium Liquors and here I can pull I have it up on Google Maps right here But yeah, it's this guy right here. Yeah. Where so where are they? Yeah, it's up on the screen here. Okay, so what's up on the screen? Yep. Here's the the space in front of Roberto's. Um, this the 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 parking engineer drive and the trans what is she? <laughs> the engineer. <laughs> the engineer uh, said that there was an issue with the. Um, people using a wheelchair to be able to get up this um, the incline here I you know I measured that with my iPhone and it's a 1% incline um, and um, that I believe ramps can go up to um, can go up much more than that uh, right here this is where the space is in front of Millennium Liquors and you can see the other space directly in front of here it looks like a, it's um, a hydro it's really the only space in front of Millennium. It's the only space yeah. in front of it. Then there's a hydrant in no the next be. spot, and then there's this. Uh, there's a space after that, and it looks like a mail truck is parked in front of illegally up there. So um, both businesses would prefer that the space be back over here, and um, and so I'm in the process of reworking this with um, you know going back through the DPW to see if you know if this space can be considered or if a space actually across the street could be considered over here there's a line of I, I believe this curb cut's been closed but there's a line of there's probably going to be about um, eight to ten parking spaces here once all of the construction is done um, on the lumberyard project and having a handicapped space there may make sense. One of the issues is that there needs to be a handicapped space on either side of the street. And there's one on the easterly side, and it's up by the DEA's office. And so, well, maybe there's a way where that one gets switched sides. I don't know. But I just think that, in, in my view, that um, you know, having this one space um, used uh, for this purpose in front of this business, is, I, I, I don't. Would it be it, appropriate to refer it back to you? I mean, to the GPC. Um. For to, for reworking, is that is that? Um, I mean, or do we have to send? We don't have to send it back to the council to send it back. Right. I mean. I mean, because I I mean, there's stuff. If, if it's the only <laughs> spot there, and if both business, and if both businesses are amenable to the one in front of Roberto's mm -hmm. because Roberto's lost the one anyway it, it, like Roberto's is looking to replace the one that it took away right but it shouldn't shift that to Millennium right. because Millennium has nothing has no part it has only that one spot so right. if they're both in agreement to that that makes sense I mean especially since this all came out of a request from Roberto's in the first place, mm -hmm. it wasn't that this kind of really came out of anything more than an inquiry in their part, right? Right. Yeah. So if you can go back and say, look, if Roberto's is fine with it and Millennium's fine with it, I, you know, 
that's my thought. If that can be worked, I I don't know who object who would object. Is there an anticipated objection to that spot in front of Roberto's? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Roberto supports it, and so does Millennium. Right. But so this you're saying this HP spot here in front of on the side on Roberto's yeah. right now is that no longer functioning? I mean, oddly well, enough, if you property. go by these maps, it's on their property. I think so. It looks yeah, like it's a city sidewalk. Yeah, but the, um, yeah, they've always had something on their property. I thought it was a homemade sign. Because they had a well, there's an HP yeah. mark right there. There's a, they've got this basically designated as an HP spot, right? See yeah. right there? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the spot that's gone. It's gone now. Right. They moved that out. Okay. Right. Isn't this part of the city right away on the street? That's a good question. I mean, this is a be arguably a bump out, but this is the standard sidewalk width. That yeah, they used to have parking in here. Yeah. Right. 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 They eliminated that turning around right. patio area, right. so yeah. they've right. since eliminated that. I mean, I, I noted they're still showing breaking on these maps, so it's not breaking anymore, and the sign's been down for a while. Um, but this this picture actually is relatively current. If we, it allows me to pivot, because you'll see lumberyard project is actually fairly far along. Oh, you got a better picture than me. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I roll, man. Yeah, you're good. And uh, so it just puzzles me if there is an existing HP spot, and this looks fairly recent. Mm -hmm. But this is there. Yeah, I'm not sure this is legal parking there. You know, so okay. these are all questions to look into. Yeah, that used to be their current I mean, can't, can't, can't yeah. um, the right. maker of the right. motion, which is TPC, are you wearing your TPC hat? Um, withdraw or ask that we uh, table or postpone until more investigation can be done or do you want us to actually move it you we don't want us move to it move it kill to the council, council and kill it yeah, yeah that seems or we can refer a waste of time because we have a motion we got to deal with yeah yeah which hat do I want to wear <laughs> so well, I think well I, I don't think that they're conflicting hats necessarily I think that you know in fact you know I, I, well, the TPC did approve it, though. Yeah, the TPC so, already approved yeah, it. Yeah, but the TPC approved it not knowing that there were uh, um, these other... Good point. Right. It sounds and, like, yeah. And, and, and you did not hear resident or citizen objections in TPC when the recommendation came forward. And right, it didn't come from now, them either. Yeah. We are now okay. in possession of new information that would actually make this untenable. Right. So I actually want to make the request as the Ward 3 City Councilor to my colleagues here on this committee that you send it back to the TPC and um, to uh, for reworking and to, for a little more exploration around. Well, so currently the motion will second. Second. Okay, the, currently the motion is literally for purposes of discussion. Uh, that's where we put it on the floor. So now the new the new motion is to refer this back to TPC for further review. Yeah. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. And there's a, there's a first and a second. Yes. See, I'm not familiar enough with the council rules. Do committees actually have Yeah, can you do that? Well, this I thought that what you Legislative matters. 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 It's following okay. with the negative right. recommendations. And this committee does. does. It does? Yes. Okay. Well, in the same way that this committee can make amendments that yeah. you know others. Alan, you know, Alan's right. quickly checking. Yeah, I, I've got them here. Because the, the one thing that our rules also particularly are set up is not to specifically kill any legislation by burying it in committee. Mm -hmm. And then a clock is ticking because there's actually been the clock starts ticking once it's been introduced. So. Yeah, but in this case, we, here, if we have a request from the committee to take it back to do a reworking. I mean, it seems like. Well, he, he's not requesting as the committee. He's requesting as a counselor. Of the we board. did exactly oh, right. this with the Grove Avenue question. That's right. Mm -hmm. we said, but we did something different. We yeah. sent it with a with negative, negative recommendation, and the council. We killed it. Council. Yeah. And right. That effectively we did. The council it. essentially returned it to yeah. TBC. I mean, it would take it would take a lot longer to do that yeah. than just referring it back. And your rules are not loading. I'm having oh damn rules. Welcome to our internet 
problem here in the Well, actually, today is today's Monday. I mean, it's on. I mean, we the other thing is we refer to the council on Monday and know that we yeah. can send it back on. on yeah, why don't we do that? Because it's it's only a few days. Did you say refer back to TPC or send it to council with a? I should refer it back to TPC, but if that seems inappropriate, because well, Alan can't find the rules, he's not sure that we can do that. I'm, I'm looking at the rules that I'm not. I mean, I, I know we've done it from this committee before. We've, we've legislative matters has sent things back to, to committee many times. You have the power to amend. I see that duty to report. It's the duty to report. Oh, is it? Oh, the <laughs> report shall be transmitting a positive, favorable, right. negative, neutral, or. And associated <laughs> both, as well as any suggested textual amendments and related documents. Mm -hmm. All right, so maybe we were never allowed. Work for I years. thought we were. Yeah. yeah. So we can't. Oh, we did we can't send back the TPC. I haven't. All those times we did, we were wrong. Oh well. We'll send it because you guys have just found it yet in the rules. When you introduce an ordinance, of course, the clock starts ticking. So that's what right. Is send it back to the council. Kill it. And then start the clock again. Do we send it back to the council? Have them send it back. But the, if the yeah. council, if council the same is clock is ticking, if the council sends it back to committee. Right. So it says for matters referred later. to the committee on legislative matters exclusively, the committee on legislative matters shall report to the full city council within sixty days. That's so it's got to go back to the council. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to the council. Council can refer it back to TPC or vote it down. Is another possibility. Mm -hmm. And so, in which case, then it can be reintroduced. Okay, okay, yeah. But the whole thing is about starting to reset clocks. So, we so the motion, the appropriate motion. I'll would be withdraw the motion. Please. It would be the, with a oh, negative. And, instead, and sub, yeah, substitute it with a. Yeah, that we send with a negative recommendation. Or just send it with a recommendation to get returned. Or, or for a recommendation to get returned to. For further consideration. Right. Yes. Well, that's it. Would be a negative recommendation with the with the codicil that goes on it that says basically that's where yeah that's where it should go back so because we either it's yay nay or neutral okay. so okay we go back to tpc the clock starts over again so I, I will say that you have made the motion for a negative recommendation is that correct yes and there was a second do you want you want to be the author of that or do you want you want to i'm fine with that okay Council well, Murphy, I just put the words in his mouth has made a, a <laughs> suggestion of a negative recommendation for the referral, and uh, Council Carney has seconded and the discussion. And it includes a recommendation that it could be with the with the recommendation. Of course, we will be there to to, to explain yeah, this. This yes, yeah, cut really. If we're not, there's no quarrel. So <laughs> Jim's got to deal with it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> any, 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 <laughs> you never know. <laughs> right, you don't know. Meteors. Meteors. That's fine. So, any discussion on the negative recommendation beyond the one we just had? All those in favor of sending this forward with a negative recommendation, with the explanation that we would prefer, we would recommend that it go back to committee. For some work. Uh, or defeat, actually, personally, I would recommend it on the council floor to just defeat it. And, and then, then it can make it. And way. then make it. Move. So, but anyway, so the motion is with a negative recommendation. All those in favor of not recommending this, please say aye. 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 Well, well, no. Negative recommendation. Negative recommendation. Of approving the negative. Yes. It's going to make it's going to that was okay. that's going to confuse people. Watching the home run. Yeah, we could do a double. We could do a double negative if anyone wants to. We've already boarded that one. We have uh, no new business uh, that I'm aware of, and so usually this is where I politely ask: Is anyone interested in returning? Move to adjourn. All those in favor of returning, please say aye. Aye. Thank you all very much.